Good morning, everyone. Um, just Jared here, taking you through a really quick tutorial for our strength and conditioning programs that we've provided as a part of our, our Blue Stay Ready program. We're going to go through the under 12s and under 14 session first for those that, that need a little bit of extra guidance with some of the exercises. Uh, a lot of them should be fairly familiar, but some might be uh, new or the terminology might not be uh, might not be 100% clear and, and we're just going to go through some of the techniques. So I'll only be about a 10 minute video for session A and session B. So session A is a strength session. Uh, so these are two separate sessions. These can be done probably once a week um, per session. So do session A on say a Monday or Tuesday and do session B maybe on a Thursday or Friday. If you really want to push yourself and you're not doing any of the other online sessions and things like that in between or sessions with your coaches you could do session a on a monday session b on a tuesday and then you could do session a again on a thursday or friday or session b on a friday or saturday you could do them each twice uh, if you wanted to and and if you wanted to to do that much s and c work Otherwise, if you're doing our other live online programs or, or our uh, sessions that are provided to do in your own time, I think once of each session, each of these sessions per week will, will probably be sufficient. So <clears throat> the start of the, the session A, before we get cracking, you will need a mini band. Um, these have become a bit of a staple of what we're doing with our blues programs, all of our s &C. If, if you don't have one, that's okay. You can do the exercises without, but I'd strongly um, recommend you, you look into or get one of your, your parents to look into grabbing these from Kmart. I think they're three or $4 from Kmart. You can get a pack of two or three uh, that are different strengths. They're really good to use. Um, we're gonna do some, some hip and ankle mobility. So, so I'll give you a couple of quick exercises to do there. I, I recommend doing a foam roll before the start of this session as well. There is a video, a tutorial video on our YouTube that we'll, we'll put it up on our Stay Ready program as well that, that Jay Ellis, our strength and conditioning coordinator did uh, a couple of months ago in, during one of the, the, the earlier lockdowns just on how to foam roll properly. So we'll put that up there. So I'll do a foam roll. I'm not gonna take you through a foam roll tutorial today. I'll do a foam roll first hip and ankle mobility and stretching. I'll take you through a couple of exercises there. So again, equipment you'll need today. You will need a chair or, or a bench of some description. Make sure it's nice and stable. You'll need your mini band and you'll probably need a yoga mat, uh, depending on what sort of surface you're working with. I'm on carpet here, but I'm still gonna use a yoga mat here. So for our hip mobility, <clears throat> a couple of really quick exercises you can do. Just come to like a tabletop position on all fours. So hands and knees on, on the mat, keeping your, your arms locked in. So keeping your elbows and your shoulders locked in and try not to lean from one side to the other. And we're just going to bring one leg up and circle it around. Okay, so just a little bit of a hip rotation. Probably five on each side will be enough to get you guys warmed up. So five circles on each leg so again kicking that leg back activating that glute bringing it out to the side and then bringing it down and around up and back out to the side out and around excellent ankle mobility pretty pretty similar um to what we would do at the stadium using a wall or something as a bit of a guide. I like to do mine on the ground here. So again, I'm just able to apply a little bit of pressure. I've got my foot down on the mat and I'm just trying to push that knee, get a nice shin angle there. And I should feel that stretch in the back here of my calf, lower, lower calf and a little bit in my Achilles. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure there and then I can come back and push back come forward using my hands to apply a little bit of pressure and push back. Probably do that five times on, on each leg. Push back. You can mix in any other stretches you feel you might need as well. If you'd like to do a couple of quick quad stretches, hamstring stretches, but the first couple of exercises we're gonna do are gonna be a little bit of a warm up as well. So again, just applying gentle pressure there. Your ankles, if you're a bit old like me, will start to crack and wake up a little bit. All right. So the first exercise as a part of our prep is a, is a crab walk with a mini band. So I'm just gonna grab my mat out of the way here. 
So a crab walk with a mini band. You're going to chuck the mini band around your ankles. And our crab walk is essentially just like a defensive slide. So we're just down in, in this position here and we're just pushing out. So I'm going to my right here. You're going to do 10 each direction. All right, so you don't have to have your hands down. You can have your hands on your waist, make sure your glutes stay active, or you can have your hands wide like a defensive stance, warm up your upper body a little bit. So if you've only got a little bit of space like I have here, you're gonna do five across, five back. We need to get to 10, okay? So you do that twice through. As the program says, you're gonna do two sets of 10 with that one. Our first strength exercise is a box or a bench squat. So again, you're going to use your chair or if you've got a box or something that you can sit down to. We're going to keep that mini band where it is, but we're going to bring it up to our knees. So the difference there is when we've got it around our knees, we're really working a little bit more into our hips. Okay, around our ankles, we're also working our knees and putting a little bit more on glute med. <clears throat> So we've got it around our, our knees here. We're doing a box squat. We're gonna do three sets of five. I'm only gonna take through one set of each exercise here. So with our box squat, you wanna have your feet about hip distance apart, okay? And we're just starting, standing up nice and straight, bands above my knees. I'm just gonna hinge at the hips and at my knees at the same time. I'm gonna tap my bum down to the chair and then explode up, okay? So tempo is really important with this. So it's probably best you count to three on the way down. One, two, three, and then explode up, okay? So it should be a second or less on the way up. So one, two, three, explode up. What the band does is teaches us to really sort of drive our knees apart. So we'll go front on here. One, two, Three, explode up, okay? If I let the band bring my knees in, that's a movement we don't want, okay? That knee knocking movement, we wanna try and avoid that. One, two, three, explode up. So don't sit all your weight down on the, on the chair or the bench or whatever you're using. Just tap and explode back up, okay? Next exercise is our glute bridges with a mini band. So we'll bring that yoga mat back in. Again, we're down on the mat. <clears throat> the band stays around our knees. So we're trying to keep those, driving those knees apart, activating glute med. Okay, you're lying flat on your back with your knees up and your feet flat on the mat. Now, if you're not sure how far apart to have your feet, or sorry, how far your feet should be from your body, you should be able to reach down either side and touch the back of your heels, okay? That's far enough. From here, we're keeping our shoulders and our head flat on the mat, stay looking up at the roof. Okay, and from here, we're just gonna peel our back slowly up, squeeze our glutes and come from a straight line all the way from our shoulders to our knees. Come slowly back down, one vertebrae at a time, and then squeeze our glutes and push up again, keeping our knees separated, keeping our knees apart with that band. Okay, so pushing through your heels here, all the way up, squeeze your glutes at the top, slowly come back down. Right, that's our glute bridge with our mini band. You're gonna do three sets of six for that exercise. All right, moving on to some upper body. We'll keep our mat out, but we don't need our mini band for these because we're doing some push-ups. With our push-ups, again, we've got variations of this exercise. I'm gonna work from, from sort of a base level up. So the first level is on your hands and knees, okay? You can be in all fours to begin with if you've, push, if you've never done push-ups before. This is a really safe place to start and you're just bringing your chest to the ground with bent hips, okay? That's probably a really base level of the push-up that you can begin with if you're just starting out that movement. Remember, with all of these versions of the push-up, we're keeping our elbows by our side, okay? We're not flaring elbows out to the side. I'll give you a different angle in a second. The next level of a push-up is to lock your hips forward. So you're still on your knees, but now we're locking our hips forward. So we're putting a little bit more of that weight 
over our hands, making it a little bit more challenging to see my hips are locked in rather than being up. And see our final sort of stage is up on our toes, hips are locked in. We're not bending up like this and we're not sagging our hips down like that. Okay, if you feel your abs stretching, okay, that means you're sagging your hips. If, you, if your bum's up in the air, okay, and you, and you don't feel your core's activated, then you're probably doing something wrong as well. So we're here, we bring our chest to the ground, elbows are not flaring out, they're staying pretty well tucked in, and we push up. Bring chest to the ground, push up. You can do a variation, okay? If you're at a level where, you know, this is, this is a good level for you to get, say, eight reps or 10 reps, then stay there. But if, if this is a little bit too easy, you can come to here and do say three or four. And then you might say, that's enough. Now my form's starting to really waver. So I'm gonna to come to my knees for my last four or five, okay? So from the front, just to show you guys really quickly what the elbows should look like. <clears throat> so our elbows, oh, I'm gonna move back. We're here, we want elbows are staying pretty well in line with our body. They're not flaring out like this. They're not too tucked in. They're just grazing the side of our body as we push up. We don't want too far out. That's gonna to start to put our shoulders under a lot of strain. Perfect. Next exercise is our split squat. So again, a split squat, just a fancy word for lunge. So from the side on, you're just going to step forward or back. I like to step back. I'll start with my left foot. So step my left foot back. I don't want to be split too far. Okay, just a probably about a meter. Okay, from here, we're trying to keep our front shin fairly vertical. Okay, you can have a little bit of forward movement, a little bit of knees over toes, that's healthy. But we don't want to be all the way forward and coming off, bringing our heel off the ground there. Okay, and we're just literally from this position here, we're just going to drop our back knee down. So just think of it from here as dropping your back knee down. So your back knee down and push up. Okay, we're doing six on each leg. Again, if you wanna hold something for a bit of resistance, body weight's probably fine right now for 12s and 14s, but after a couple of weeks, if you start to find this a little bit too easy, you can hold anything. Could be a brick, could be a bag of flour, could be a water bottle. Any additional resistance outside of your body weight, is good to help us build up that strength. Okay, so again, I'm just dropping that back knee down. I'm not worrying too much about what this front leg does as long as my heel stays on the ground. So that's our split squat. Another exercise we might need the plank, uh, we might need our mat is, is the plank. So again, similar to the push up, there's varying levels we can do this, depending on where you're at in your training life again we can go on our knees this one's going to be a bit difficult to do on all fours so you're probably going to have to go knees with the hips locked in and we're on our elbows so we're here holding a plank or we're up on our toes and again we want to make sure that our elbows are directly under our shoulders hips are locked in okay so we're not bums up in the air and we're not hips sagging down low Locked in nice and tight here. Good way to make sure that you're properly locked in is you should be able to squeeze your glutes and squeeze your abs at the same time. Breathing's really important as well. Make sure you're taking nice big deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth for the whole set. It's our plank. So we're going for 60 seconds on that plank exercise, three sets of 60 seconds. And our final exercise is a calf raise. So you can use your... Bench or chair again, as a bit of support. Move back, sorry. Bench or chair, two feet at a time. We're doing three sets of 15. So again, tempo is important and it come up explosively and then slowly down. So what that looks like from the side is I'm coming up explosively, heels off the ground and then slowly back down, up explosively slowly back down one two three on the way back down so we want that lowering phase where we're stretching that calf and achilles to be nice and slow and controlled 
movement on the way up is explosive. If you wanted to add extra range of motion to this, you could do that. You could do this movement off, off of a step and get a little bit of extra range of motion, drop those heels down off the step. But doing it from a floor right now is gonna be, is gonna be fine. Okay, so that's the end of our strength session for 12s and 14s. The next session is our speed and power session for you to do in your own time. The warm up is the same. So I'm not gonna redo that. Um, some hip, ankle mobility exercises and some stretching followed by, by our crab walks with the mini band. <clears throat> the first exercise we have is acceleration with deceleration. All right. So for those that don't remember, I'm gonna show you that one really quickly. <laughs> Move my camera back here a little bit. You will need a little bit more space for the power session. Um, you will, you'll still need your mini band, obviously, for a crab walk. You will need some form of a box. Now, I'm not going to use that chair um, because it's not safe for me to jump up on. So you will need even just the steps in your backyard um, or something like that. I've got a step here in my lounge room I'm going to use as a, a little low box to show you guys how to do the the drop landing and, 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 the, uh, and the box jumps. And we've also got some skipping, okay? So that's another one. If you've done any of my live Zoom sessions, you'll know that um, mini bands and, and skipping ropes is something that, yeah, it's not mandatory, but it'll, it'll make um, these sessions a lot easier for you to uh, participate in. So again, skipping rope, I think one of the, these little ones, <coughs> just the, the speed rope here little plastic pack from Kmart. I think they're two or three dollars and I think you can order those online at the moment. So if you don't have them for the first week or so of our Stay Ready program, don't stress. I'll show you an alternative to skipping, but our acceleration, deceleration. So we're doing eight to 10 reps. Pretty simple exercise. Move our chair and our mat out of the way. But again, a really good exercise for basketball. It's pretty simple. Essentially, all we're doing is we're just going to start down in a nice low, like a sprint takeoff stand. I've got my left leg forward, so I'm pushing off my right leg here. I'm literally just going to push off and take two or three really quick steps and come to a, a really abrupt stop. Okay, but we know as basketballers that pitter patter helps us slow down quickly. Okay, so I'm going to simulate that. So I'm going to push off here and just come to a really quick stop. All right. If I'm doing 10 reps, I'll probably do five on my right leg, five on my left. So I'm going left leg forward again here. I'm down nice and low, push off and just come to a really quick stop, all right? So it's not a lot of hard work. It's just quick takeoff. So trying to explode off the mark. You might even have a parent or brother or sister or someone give you a, a cue to take off. Okay, so, so it's reactive. Uh, I'll do one with my right leg forward here. So I'm pushing off my left foot. So I push and come to a really quick stop, okay, with that pitter patter. So that's our acceleration, deceleration. I'd do five reps on either leg. A box, uh, a box drop landing. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use my step here for this exercise. Excuse my my shoes and everything here, but I've got a little step in my lounge room here. So I'm just going to step. So this is just working on landing technique. So we're just gonna step off so you can put, put one foot across. You don't have to jump off. All right, well, I'm just gonna step across and then come to a nice soft landing. Okay, so for those that have done sessions with Jay before, he, he uses this terminology to sit down on your motorbike. Okay, like you're riding a bike or riding a motorbike when you come to that landing. All right, it's really just coming into that soft knees and hips coming into that squat landing. Okay, so we're not landing legs stiff. You can hear the sound. You can hear the difference of the, the, the force reverberating up through my body there. Whereas when I land in a squat, in that stick landing, it's a really nice soft landing. So that's just working on that. Um, again, that's just working on that landing technique as much as it's important to work on jumping. It's, it's, it's probably even more important to work on landing. Now we're gonna do some box jumps. So again, I've got my step here, but you guys would probably be able to work off a, probably two steps, a little bit higher. Maybe some even go to three steps, but don't, don't risk injury. Okay, start off a nice low step because it's really important that we land properly first as well. So with that box drop or that drop landing, we're doing three, three sets of three. 
our bench and our box jump is also three sets to three. So again, it's just like an explosive squat. We swing our arms back, okay? We swing our arms through and up, and we're just landing again on that bike or on that motorbike. So we swing our arms through and back, okay, to build momentum, take off, and we land as soft as we can. Three sets of three. That's our box jump. Again, you can challenge yourself a little bit with the height of that. Next movement again, now we're going into more sort of a horizontal takeoff is a broad jump. So a broad jump is literally just a fancy way of saying an explosive horizontal jump. So again, our arms and how we set up this exercise is really important. When I do a broad jump, I like to start up on my toes with my arms up as high as I can reach. Then I swing my arms through just to gain extra momentum. Swing my arms through, sit back into my heels and my glutes and explode out into that horizontal landing. All right, so again, what that looks like at full speed. Start up on my toes, nice and high, arms reaching up high. Swing through, back, okay? So we're trying to explode as far as we can horizontally. This is great for sprint takeoff. Um, and again, just working on that landing technique. 45 skater jump with a stick, another favorite. So that lateral movement, we're supporting that lateral movement. We're also strengthening those muscles of our knees and ankles because a lot of our side to side movement or landing when we jump side to side, we, we need to be really proficient in that as, as basketballers. So side to side or skater jump with a stick. I'm just gonna start on my left leg here. Okay, I'm gonna bend, I'm gonna sit into that left hip. So I'm gonna sort of swing my right leg behind me and swing my left arm behind me, okay? Then as I take off, I'm gonna to spring to, to the side here like a skater. So this looks almost like a little bit like an ice skater. So I'm gonna swing back, left arm, right arm comes across, right leg goes behind and explode out. Okay, and try and stick that landing, all right? Really difficult. If you don't stick the landing in the first week or two, don't stress. There's something to build up to. We're doing six of these on either side. So again, full speed. I'm sitting into that hip. Don't worry too much if you don't get the mechanics of the leg swing and the arm swing right. That's not so important at this stage. Just sit into that hip and push off and try and stick that landing. Again, when we stick that landing, it's much like when we do our box landing, but on one leg, okay? so we're. We're still in that sort of squat form. Yeah, back straight, hips bent, knees bent, okay? Six either side. So you're gonna do six from left to right. Again, exploding out, trying to land. And then you'll do six again on your right leg. You'll swing that left leg through and explode out. Okay, and try and stick that landing. Then we finish our speed and power session with skipping. Okay, four sets of 60 seconds. So again, a little bit of cardio, but a little bit of reactive force development here. Skipping is just so good for us, okay? I, I just try and, especially through this Stay Ready program, if you're not doing a session, whatever you're doing, shooting, form shooting, any work you're doing, skill work, try and build some skipping into it, okay? Not only is it a great way to get your heart rate up a little bit, um, but it's just such a good uh, exercise for our feet, ankles, calves, muscles of our lower limbs to keep them ready to, to get back to basketball. So even if you're doing form shooting in between sets of form shooting, do 60 seconds of skipping, okay? But for here, this program, we've got four, four minutes of 60 seconds. I'm inside, so if it's raining and you don't have an indoor area, you can just still do this exercise. Obviously, if we've got a skipping rope, we're doing our skipping. If we don't, you can do an exercise really simple. It's called pogo hops. So we're just, again, we're just bouncing on the spot. My heels are never coming to the ground. And I'm just trying to reduce the amount of time that I spend on the ground. So really, I'm just trying to explode up as quickly and as high as I can without really bending my knees too much or bending my hips too much. So if you find that you start to come into like more of that movement, that's more of a squat jump. So we just want to make it really quick and reactive. Don't worry too much about the height, okay? And obviously with skipping, this is a great way to build skipping in is to start with these pogo hops. And then it just becomes about timing with the rope, okay? 
So once you get your rope, if you don't already have one, get your rope in your hands once you've ordered it. And again, we keep that rope in nice and tight, depending on the length and little movements with our wrist to get that rope moving. All right, guys, that's the end of our under 12s and under 14s strength and conditioning session. So as always, if you've got any questions, get your parents to shoot me an email. Um, you can ask questions during any of the live Zooms that I'm taking as well. And um, again, this is for you guys to do in your own time. Refer back to this video as much as you like. Uh, we've gone through each of the exercises, but if you have any questions or at any stage through the program, you need a bit of an extra challenge, uh, a way to build the exercise up, make it a little bit more challenging, just shoot us an email. I'll be happy to send through some, some ideas. So, okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys.